I'm an architect evangelist with Microsoft. I'm here at the Betty Crocker Labs with Ben Roy. I'm an architect on the uh, internet team. So Ben, um, you know, I was interviewing with some, some other folks here and we were talking about this, this very cool app that you folks have built. Heavy services based application. Killer architecture Definitely. by the way. Um, one of the questions that came up in an earlier conversation was, so what was the development cycle like for this application? I mean, I, not from necessarily the UI perspective, but from the services perspective. How long did it take? Was it, was it an arduous journey or was it pretty straightforward? Uh, I, would, I would say a little bit of both. So the team that was actually building the core services um, to support this application um, were running a Scrum development process. So I think the, the core development was about two, two sprints, mm -hmm. which is about two months for them. Um, there may have been some work that happened a little before or a little bit after, um, but most of the development for these particular services happened in about a two to three month time period. Excellent. So, as part of so people who aren't necessarily familiar with Scrum, uh, what kind of design artifacts are produced as part of a Scrum process? Um, well, it kind of depends on the team. Mm -hmm. um, for our team, we try to we try to capture um, design uh, design diagrams and stuff like that when we're going through the uh, the early phase of the design. Uh, and then usually some documentation for the people who are going to be using it because the, again the, the product from this was all services mm -hmm. so some documentation around what um, what the services are how they beha behave and how um, people should call them and interact with them so did you use any of the visual studio tooling for some of this kind of activity um, not a whole lot we use Visio for some of the uh, like the diagrams and stuff like that um, mm -hmm. we use we do use uh, TFS for tracking all the tasks and for mm -hmm. the actual scrum process um, but we don't use any of the like the modeling tools or anything. Not like the modeling tools. So how did you approach testing, given the fact that you know this could be a significantly large application, right. lots of people invoking the services, God willing? Uh, what what was the philosophy? How how are you doing that? Well, we have a um, we've got a QA uh, QA lead on the team. So we have we built a test application and a web web application that would exercise the services, and then we had our QA team member. Um, going through specific use cases to validate that what what the application the end application would be doing worked within the services. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a little bit of guesswork because we actually didn't have the final uh, the final comps for what the application was going to look like. Right. So we were sort of guessing on here's what we think the flows will be, um, and then we just tested to that. So were you testing in what thousands of instances against these services at a given time, or is it uh, the, in the hundreds kind of a range? Well, so the, that the QA testing was done pretty much one user at a time, mm -hmm. and then um, the load testing followed that. So those were scripting, I think, about a thousand virtual users against against the service. So. so as you were going through that testing cycle, was there anything architecturally that you identified that we were like, gosh, you know, whoa, you know, this is way too chatty. This is, you know, what I mean. Uh, yeah, there were, I mean, because there were a lot of services underneath here that existed for other purposes that we kind of rolled up into this application. So there were definitely places where there might have been legacy systems or services where the performance wasn't what we wanted. Um, so I think that the motto is generally cash often, cash early. Uh -huh. So we, we, um, we have a number of places where we're, we're caching either in a database or in memory as we move up the stack. Mm. As we roll the data together, um, we cache that information to make it uh, more responsive. Excellent. So um, it was talked about that uh, most of this was coded in VB. Was there any C sharp done in this, or is this? Uh, there wasn't. Okay. Um, so VB is the, the internal standard for development. So it's all all built in VB.net. Um, the actual the front end I think is built in C sharp, mm -hmm. but all the service stack is in VB. I'm sure the VB developers will be excited to hear that. I, I know sure I be sometimes about that. being an old VB guy, I know sometimes that they you know, what do you mean VB? Uh, it's only C sharp. You can now. build real <laughs> Exactly. So I think this gives them great hope that we can. Um, is there any other interesting architectural artifacts that you discovered while building this? Things that you would do differently or things that you would tell people about watch out for these kinds of situations? Uh, not off the top of my head. Not off the top of your head. Well, thank you, sir. No problem. Thanks. Thanks. Yep.